Hello there! Welcome to part 17 of my Clone Wars analysis series. In today's video, we'll be examining Blue Shadow Virus, Season 1, Episode 17. The goal of this series is to unpack the Clone Wars animated show and look closely at its themes, characters, and politics. As always, there will be spoilers as we're covering the entire episode and series. That said, let's jump into it. Blue Shadow Virus is the first episode of a two part narrative arc that highlights Anakin's attachment to Padme. As this character trait is what turns him to the dark side in Revenge of the Sith, this arc makes a great supplement to the film and foreshadows his inevitable fall. In addition to his attachment to Padme, this arc also addresses Anakin's growing connection to his Padawan, Ahsoka. The arc also presents the audience with many callbacks to The Phantom Menace as the characters return to Naboo for the setting and details from the film arise. Dr. Vindi, a Separatist scientist, has created a deadly virus from the galaxy past and plans to unleash it across the Republic. The quote for the episode is, Fear is a disease. Hope is the only cure. This is analytically relevant to Star Wars as fear is the root of the dark side. It is Anakin's fear of losing his friends and Padme that allows him to be manipulated by Palpatine. It is Luke's fear of his friends being in danger that leads him into Vader's trap. Hope is an important word in Star Wars, as the original movie is called A New Hope and the Rebellion destroys the Death Star. The Death Star's purpose was to make the galaxy obedient to the Empire through fear. Fear and hope are intertwined into what Star Wars is as a concept, and within the context of this episode, the disease aspect is both literal and metaphorical. The Blue Shadow Virus is a legitimate virus, but the fear that stems from it and affects Anakin is the same disease that will ultimately make him lose himself at the end of war, as his attachment to Padme is toxic. The opening narration explains that battle droids were spotted in the Naboo grasslands, and their leadership fears another invasion. When the Trade Federation invaded Naboo with their droid army, it broke a relative peace throughout the galaxy and set a path towards future violence and conflict, ultimately leading to the Intergalactic Clone War as the next step in Palpatine's plans to seize power. As the victims of the Trade Federation's original military crime, it makes sense that Naboo would be on edge about a full-on separatist invasion now that the droid army is more varied and financed. Senator Amidala and Representative Binks return to Naboo to investigate, and the iconic Naboo hangar from The Phantom Menace is brought into the Clone Wars series. The Naboo Queen wants Padme to convince either the Senate or the Jedi Council that there is a threat, and expresses that she is unsure of who is actually in charge of the war. While this is minor dialogue, I think it expresses the widespread opinions throughout the galaxy on the Clone War itself. In Jedi Crash, Ayla Secura had to tell the alarming colony that the Jedi aren't responsible for the war. In the sabotage arc in Season 5, a public protest is held outside of the Jedi Temple because of the war. And ultimately in Revenge of the Sith, Palpatine is able to manipulate the Senate into believing that the Jedi tried to assassinate him and take power for themselves. Which is believable for the widespread galaxy as for as far as the most people are concerned, the Jedi caused the war. After the Hidden Enemy episode with Slick accusing the Jedi of being enslavers, the Jedi may also be seen as immoral for allowing the use of men created in a lab with the purpose of dying in battle. The Naboo leadership has the droid bodies and wants to examine them for information, which leads to a buzzsaw opening the head of the tactical droid. C-3PO is present and requests permission to shut down. C-3PO is a tragically humorous character who is almost always in unpleasant situations, and this image is kind of like that of a human being in a room of a brain operation they don't want to be seeing. When the tactical droid is reactivated without its sight, C-3PO manipulates it into giving away information by feeding into the droid's pride. While you may think tactical droids are emotionless and without ego, I think their programming allows for a calculated sense of vanity. In Ryloth, a tactical droid will abandon Watt Tambor, call him a fool, and has an air of superiority around itself because he knew when to leave when Tambor didn't. Jar Jar tries to catch an insect with his tongue, which in typical Jar Jar fashion creates an elaborate and clumsy incident. However, his native Naboo history and ancestry allow the plot to advance. The battle droids have mud on them, and Jar Jar informs Batman that the insects are found in the mud under certain trees, which helps him narrow down the locations for the Separatist bunker. The Naboo leadership alerts the Jedi Council and requests help, and Padme adds on that General Kenobi and Skywalker would be of specific and special importance. She informs them that the Naboo government's relationship with the youngins have declined in recent years and that Kenobi is seen as one of their own. This gives some spotlight to the Phantom Menace in Kenobi's younger years when he defeated Darth Maul and helped against the Trade Federation, thus saving all of Naboo. Following the meeting, Padme exerts that she's going to find the Separatist lab. Padme is a very strong-willed character and has no qualms with doing things herself, despite being a senator and a lady, which results in Captain Typho's questioning if her decision is wise. Padme's main motivations as a character are about diplomacy, peace, and justice in the Republic, but Naboo and the safety of its people are her specific concern, and this episode plays off of those traits displayed in The Phantom Menace. A foil to Padme could be Chairman Joe, a political figure and trespasser who had the safety of his people in mind, but didn't do things himself and had a short-sighted sense of reality. Peppy Bao is a Gungan woman whose herd begins to collapse instantly upon drinking the river water poisoned with the Blue Shadow Virus. Padme and Jar Jar arrive to investigate while in hazmat suits of sorts. Assuming them to be behind the poison, Peppy Bao attacks them, 
but the misunderstanding is quickly resolved. The villain for this arc is Dr. Nuvo Vindi, a Separatist-backed mad scientist of sorts. The audience is introduced to him when he spots Jar Jar and Padme's presence in the swamp above the lab, and he says, I suppose one can never have too many lab rats. It's inferable that he doesn't experiment on small things like rats, but on people he's captured or prisoners he's been given by the Separatists. As he's creating a biological weapon with a virus, and he's likely had to experiment on people to perfect it, he's immediately a cold and sinister figure. As Padme is an attractive young woman, Vindi asks her, what's a life form like you doing in a swamp like this? It's similar to the Clone Wars movie when Zero the Hutt asked something along the lines of, what's a senator doing in this part of town? Padme has a habit of finding herself in bad situations, but is usually intentional and out of her duty for Naboo or the Republic. She flips the question back at Vindi by saying, I was about to ask you the same thing. Naboo is her planet. She was its queen and now its representative in the Galactic Senate, and Vindi has chosen Naboo as a starting point for his diabolical plans of spreading plague. He's a trespasser on her property. Vindi explains that he recreated the Blue Shadow Virus, an incredibly deadly virus that was eliminated from the galaxy many generations ago. He's further depicted as insane by his dialogue of repeated yes, 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 yes in conversation. Without a doubt, he's obsessed with his work and takes pride in the fact that in his mad experiments, he's been able to take the formerly liquid virus and turn it into an airborne contagion. As engineering an extinct virus takes time, I speculate that Vindi was attempting to do this long before the Clone Wars even started, and that Sidious or Dooku would then financially back him and give him a platform for success, as the clones are a biological military and the droid army is not. Is it a similar financial investment that Dooku made in Lockdurd's Defoliator? Later, it is revealed that Vindi disappeared 10 years prior, which would be around the time Sidious and Dooku ordered the creation of the clone army, and in the next episode, Vindi says that making the virus was his quote-unquote job. Whether he was hired by Sidious to make a virus that would cripple the Republic's military, or simply to just cause chaos throughout the Republic with a plague, it seems to be a plot from the Sith Lord so as Chancellor of the Republic, Palpatine can play victim and gain power from the chaos. Padme comments on Vindi's insanity for bringing back a virus that will kill all lifeforms. Vindi then states that thousands and thousands of so-called superior lifeforms are spreading their disease of war throughout the galaxy. Perhaps they are the ones who should be eradicated. Vindi is without a doubt talking about the Jedi, who were in the thousands during the Clone Wars. As the Jedi's are force sensitive and have such powers, the galaxy might perceive them as superior beings. Vindi critiques the Jedi for spreading the Clone Wars, which support my earlier analysis of the Naboo Queen and other examples of the galaxy putting the Jedi as responsible for the war. The question on Vindi's motivations would then be, if he is so against war, why is he perpetuating it by joining the Separatists? Regardless, his reference to the Jedi's eradication is a bit ominous. I doubt he knows of Order 66, but it seems he envisions a galaxy without Jedi. I speculate about the possibility of Vindi having a grudge against the Jedi for an unknown reason, and potentially this is why Sidious could have recruited him 10 years prior. When Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Ahsoka arrive on Naboo, Anakin questions why Captain Typho let Padme go to the lab by herself. C-3PO admits that once Padme has an idea, she's hard to stop, to which Anakin says, I know what you mean. It's a subtle reference to the fact that they are married in their numerous adventures together so far. Ahsoka and Pepe Bao go to investigate the swamp, while Typho shows Anakin and Obi-Wan more data from the uncovered battle droids. Typho has discovered that Dr. Nuva Vindi is the one behind the lab on Naboo, and explains that he disappeared 10 years ago and the Jedi learn of his plot with the bombs. Vindi is going to spread the airborne blue shadow virus to major star systems, and as Obi-Wan notes, the war would be the least of their worries if a plague were to arise. Anakin is concerned about raiding the lab and Padme potentially dying, but Obi-Wan notes that it is a necessary risk because they can't allow the bombs to get out. This episode highlights Anakin's fear over losing Padme. In Jedi Crash, Ala Secura told Ahsoka, don't lose a thousand lives just to save one. The same quote is applicable here with Anakin, and Obi-Wan reaffirms that it's better for one planet to be infected than the entire galaxy. Anakin is extremely anxious about the situation as Naboo is entirely at risk, but primarily because Padme is in danger. To mask his love for her, he calls her the Senator in front of Obi-Wan. When asked about why Obi-Wan isn't on edge, Obi-Wan says, I'm better at hiding it. We often see Obi-Wan be sarcastic and witty throughout the Clone Wars, and rarely have dark side emotions like fear or anger even when Maul goes to extremes to punish him. While Obi-Wan has a pretty horrible life, he's excellent at managing his emotions and remaining noble in the darkest of times. Obi-Wan knows that something is up between Anakin and Padme, so as before they leave for the bunker, he says, Padme may be lost, Anakin. Don't risk the mission trying to rescue her. Anakin's attachment is going to be tested, and as it's his lover and not a friend like R2 from Downfall of the Droid, the intensity of his fear and anger is deeper. In the bunker, Anakin and his squad arrive to the main lab, but Vindi electrocutes Padme and threatens to kill her if the Republic doesn't stand down. Anakin drops his lightsaber, which is significant, as it is reaffirmed many times that one's weapon is their life. Vindi electrocutes Padme again, and then escapes with his virus as Anakin goes to save her instead of stop him. 
he sacrifices the mission for his personal attachments. However, ultimately Anakin chases Vindy down. The scientist is about to escape in his ship that has risen to the surface when Pepe Bao smacks him across the back of the head. In terms of the plot, this makes sense. While Vindy tortured Padme, Anakin hadn't lost anything to him yet. Pepe Bao's herd died because of Vindy's virus and experiments, thus she gets revenge and justice by giving Vindy the final blow. Vindy is quite literally insane, as even though he's captured, he expresses joy in the fact that they're all going to die when the bombs go off. But the bombs don't go off as they've all been deactivated. The final scene is Anakin communicating with Ahsoka and asking if Padme is okay. Ahsoka confirms the senator is fine, but also says she is fine too and sarcastically says, thanks for asking, which positions the levels of Anakin's attachment. Padme is his main focus and concern at any given moment. If there was a tier list of Anakin's attachments, she'd be at the top in the lover category. Then there's Anakin's friend tier where you have R2 from Downfall of a Droid, Obi-Wan from Obi-Wan Undercover Arc, where Anakin thinks his master is dead, and Ahsoka who many times Anakin expresses the fear of losing. The next episode follows this one and plays off of these ideas by putting both Padme and Ahsoka into the position of being lost as they are infected with the blue shadow virus following an outbreak. This strains Anakin's patience and will and foreshadows the dangers of his fear and attachment even further. 